Harvey. Good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, yes, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, uh, old friend Carlos uh, Lopez Blanco. First, he is coming from uh, Madrid. He has also a very large experience. He participated uh, to the Spanish uh, government uh, maybe 10 years or 15 years uh, ago. Uh, he is now uh, executive uh, director in uh, Telefonica. Telefonica is also a very active uh, member of uh, IDAT. Mm -hmm. uh, and Carlos uh, will come back on the uh, very hot uh, issue, which was uh, firstly presented uh, yesterday by uh, Orange, what may be uh, the, the place, the role of trust in the new business model of the telco. Carlos, please. Uh, thank you. If and I have a presentation. That yeah, actually, let me just be, you know okay. give you a clicker and there okay, you go. Okay, so uh, good morning to everyone. Thank you for your presentation, your introduction, and uh, thank you the organizers for having me and um, for this opportunity given to Telefonica to show which is the perspective of a telco operator. And that is one of the major challenges that the telco industry is going through, which is how to do in this data space. And I think that the, the title of this, of this part of the session reflects very well the two problems, the two alternatives that telco operators we have. Uh, what is the role? Is there any space for telco operators in this data economy, in this data space? Um, and second, this alternative, should we try to monetize that data and to compete with other companies that make uh, of data their core business or should be a uh, trusted third party? Uh, let me go to the title of my presentation, which is the conclusion of my, uh, of, of, uh, my presentation, the 20 minutes presentation, is that for Telefonica, the target, the goal of the activity of telco operators in this space should be to give customers the control of their digital life. So this is the uh, main strategy that we think that is the the one that Telefonica considers more appropriate for a telco company right now. And to give customers, and better, to give customers back the control of their digital lives. Because we think, we feel that in the last years, our customers have lost the control of their digital lives. And we think that our mission, one of our missions should be to help them to recover, to take the control of their digital lives. Let me start with... Uh, general vision of the public context, public po the policy context in which this challenge of data takes place. Probably you have heard in the last two years, thousands of times that we are living in the full revolution, that we are in the middle of this digital revolution that is only comparable with the industrial revolution that took place in the late 18th century and 19th century, that we are now going through a disrupted moment in the evolution of the humanity. But let me put as a question, are really been in a new society, we are contemplating really a revolution. There is really a digital revolution. So I think that the answer is yes for two main reasons. The first one is a revolution because the way of doing things is changing dramatically. But the essence of this change is not technology. I think that this is very something very important to understand. We are not going through a technological breakthrough. Because, for instance, if you see the most famous of all these examples that I have on the screen, the Uber, the Uber business model, that is probably the most disruptive example of a digital economy that we have seen in the last years. The Uber, from the technology viewpoint, is nothing new. They are using technologies that we know very well since ten, five, ten years. The difference, and this is why we are in a revolution, is that with the use of these sometimes mature technologies, they are changing the way 
in which service health provider and the way in which customers interact with the uh, business model and with the company. And this, there is a second factor why we think that this is really a revolution. Because a revolution affects to everyone. And the digital revolution is affecting to everyone. It's affecting technology sector, but it's affecting, Uber is a good example, the traditional economy too. This is the big challenge. So I think that if taxi drivers have a problem, with digital economy, everyone has a problem with digital economy. So I think all the sectors of the economy has a big challenge to, to cope with. It's a challenge for rich countries, but for developing countries too. For developing countries, it's not just a challenge, it's a huge opportunity. And third, it's a challenge for economies in good shape and economies in crisis. Crisis could be a good moment, to introduce digital strategy in the outcome of the crisis and the difficult economic situation. So we think that really we are going through this, this digital revolution. What's the next step in this revolution? We think that the next step is exactly that we call the data society or better, the data economy. This is the next step in this evolution and that we call the digital economy is the conclusion of these two factors, internet and the data society. And what data economy means? Mainly three factors. The connectivity, we are always connected. Second, data processing. And third, transformation on business model. Those three are the characteristics of the digital economy in our view. First of one, always connected. So data economy is the result of connectivity, that everyone and everything is connected. And this has created a huge amount of data. But store data is nothing. Store data create, give, gives value to nobody. So to have data, to have this amount of data simply stored is no value for anyone. It's not value for the company, it's not value for the society. So the second requirement of this digital economy is that this data needs to be processed. And we need to extract value from this data. And the third factor of this digital, of this data economy is that the preeminence of data explains that some companies are making a huge investment in trying to position themselves in the data economy. Why Microsoft has paid so huge amount of money for a company like LinkedIn? Because their data. Because they think that the data is a space in which we have to invest heavily. And why Google invests eight billion every year in data centers? Because they think that they need to adapt to the data. And business transformation and to adapt business model and business structure to the data economy is critical. And let me give you a brilliant example of that. General Electric. General Electric is no longer an industrial company. It's no longer the industrial company that used to be. Now, General Electric is a software company, it's a digital company. And now uh, the, the center and the focus of the business model of General Electric is the software, the data, and the, that they call, and we share with this notion, data sovereignty. And Telefonica, Telefonica in the last years, we have hired more than 500 engineers to work in big data in two years. Or Google, Google has more than 1,000 experts in data mining, artificial intelligence, etc. So these three aspects are essential. Connectivity, which is the source of data, the need of processing the data, and third, the need of transform the business model to extract value of their data. And let me back to this general policy context in which digital economy takes place. So, the digital economy, the digital challenge that we, have, that we call it, is the 
policy context in which all this revolution is taking place. And let me remember you that this is the big challenge that not just the telco companies, but the whole society is in front of. Digital economy is today, we, we live now in a world in which we have digital economy and real economy. That this will not be the case in five or ten years' time. In ten years' time, digital economy will be the only economy, will be the economy itself. Digital life will be the digital the life itself. And we have here all, the companies, the governments, everyone, a big challenge to understand which are the rules that will be ruling this new reality. And we, not, we need to decide right now which should be those rules. Data. Data for what? Because storing data could not serve any purpose, but data can enrich customer lives and to be a benefit for society, we have seen in the very brilliant previous presentation. Let me give you some examples. We can use this data for social good, with, for pandemic disease information to prevent crime, to increase public services efficiency or private service efficiency, to face some world challenges like the small agriculture and the environmental challenges, or even to improve the quality of public statistics. So, the data can be good for the society, but also data generate fears, and sometimes for good reasons. So I think that I don't need to remind you what has happened in the last two years with the misuse of data. And this is something that is relevant for our customers and is relevant for the public opinion. So, and this is first and partially, but first is partially consequence of the business model on some companies that is based in the commercial and intensive use of personal data. Because some of the internet companies are mainly advertising companies. And the center of the business model is to extract value and to extract money from the data of the customers for advertisement. And this data economy has a problem of transparency. Please, if you have time, review this study that has been done in the US in a group of university students. So university students, so that means people familiar with the use of technology. Okay, the first conclusion of this study, study is that 98% of the students didn't read the terms of service before signing up for a fake social network site. That was the test. As a consequence, 98 of them agreed to provide that firstborn child as payment for the service. But more seriously, in this study, reflects that the, the average size of a term of service is 10 pages, and that the minimum time needed to review and to read is 16 minutes. So we have in this data economy a very, very serious problem of transparency too. And third, we have, and it's obvious, in this data economy, a very, very serious problem of security. So we think that this, those three are the aspects that we should be considered because there are three aspects that uh, uh, are worried our customers too and our citizens. So, as a result, we have seen in the previous presentation, data management is on the public opinion. Data management is in the public agenda. So, we have a lot of issues in the public discussion around the data and the data economy, portability, GDPR, the opt-ins, the public security, a lot of things related to the digital economy that are now at the center of the public agenda. And this is why in Telefonica, Telefonica, when we review our public agenda, we put our customers' 
concerns at the center of this agenda. And this is why many of the issues that are at the center of Telefonica's public agenda are related with the concerns that our customers have when they use the data and when they use the, uh, our services and the internet. The big question here, in this data economy that we have reviewed in the middle of the storm of the digital revolution, is there any space for telco operators in this world? This is the big question, in my view. And the first thing that we have to be aware of is that telco operators, we have a lot of data. And that we extract this data from our three traditional platforms. The network, the <clears throat> IT services of the intelligence over the network, and third, the services. So these three platforms are the main source of data for telco operators. And we have access to millions of data. We have access to all of the data generated by these three platforms. And that we call the four platform is the data that we have extracted from these three uh, traditional platforms of telco operators. And there is one thing that for us is very important to understand. We have a lot of data, but telco operators manage different data than OTTs. They have data coming from other activities. They come from uh, web surfing, for etc. We have all data coming from these three platforms. The network, the intelligence over the network, and the specific service that we provide. So, what could be, in our view, the, tel the telco proposal, or the proposal for our telco? Two pillars. One, to create our own data space. And based on telco strengths, based on the strengths that is given to the telcos because these three platforms. And second, to create a space of value and trust for our customers. To create our own data space, managing our own data. Only the data that we have in our commercial relation with our customers. To have a different approach. This is, we have to differentiate in our data policy from the OTTs. So, to have different posi position with the customers. So, we don't need to sell data. We are paid for our customers. We don't need to, to extract direct money from that. And to respect and trust cons customer data. And to create this space of value and trust that can create, that for us is absolutely essential here in this data economy, is to create digital confidence. That is the other way to say to be the trusted third party with our customers. What Telefonica want to do, or what Telefonica think that has to be done? We summarize with this idea that I put at the beginning to give the data back to customers, because for us, the answer to the question who owns the data is very clear. Our customers own their data. They are the owners of the data. So that we think, or that we, we, we think with this idea of giving back the, uh, customer, the data back to customers, is that all these five aspects, to ensure that customers have control of their personal data, this data, this is essential, to guarantee that customer has a choice, to ensure that data is used to enrich customer lives, to help business to make better decisions and to deliver societal, or society, societal benefits. Give me some examples, not just of big data, of that we call tiny data. So we can add a lot of value providing some very specific service to our customers. Let you have here three examples. Let me mention one of them. Using, if our customers allow us, the roaming information, we can help uh, our customers with the problems that they can have with fraud in their credit cards. Because we can know when our customers are in the country or outside the country. 
So if they allow us, we can work with the financial uh, institutions and the banks to help them to uh, prevent fraud and to help our customers. Or in developing countries, you know that we are a very active company in Latin America, the process of bankarization of the, of the citizens is very limited, and data and telco operators can play a big role there. So, and one of the things that for us is essential is that this data policy, this data approach should be flexible and has to adapt to the profile of every customer and should be able to uh, work with customers that are, that we call here, digital introvert, that they want only to protect their privacy and they don't want to be tracked. So we have to be able to provide them with this, with this confidence, with this security. But there are other customers that are extrovert. They prefer to engage with uh, other brands, to extract value, direct or indirect, to their data. We have been, as telco operators, been able to uh, work with or to help them in, in being this, uh, to extract this value from their personal data. And working, and for us, this is essential, creating digital confidence. So I think that this is the base of the relation that we have to have with our customers in the digital space and the, in the data space and the data economy. And for us, digital confidence is a notion that reflects three aspects, transparency, privacy, and security. And our belief is that it's impossible to work on transparency without working on privacy and security and to work in privacy without, without working on transparency and security. Privacy, transparency, and security are three aspects of the same reality. And the notion that we consider that summarizes this is digital confidence, and it's a duty of a telco operators to create digital confidence in our customers. The question that is on the title of this part of the conference, what where the money comes from. What is, why to expend out of effort and investment in data, where the money comes from? Let me say, so, that we are working and we will work in, in the future very heavily in that we call the four platform, which is a platform of all the data that we extract from the other three traditional platforms of Telefonica as telco operators. But we don't want to charge our private customers for the services that we can provide them. So where the money comes from? First, we, but we expect other benefits. What expect from this new approach to our relation with the customer? A reduction on churn, that is money for our telco operator. A new engagement with our customers that we think that is very, very important, and a new perception by our customers, decision makers, of the position of the telco operators. And let me be frank, maybe, maybe this could be a good instrument to try to improve one of the black holes of telco operators historically, which is the relation with the customers and the way of interaction that telco operators historically have had with the customers. And we think that this new approach to data, this new relation with customer, can help telco operators to be perceived by customers in a different way. There are, of course, other aspects of our customer, which is the business customer, in which the approach to data should be different because they have different needs and, of course, probably they will able to have a different engagement and to pay uh, the services that eventually a telco operator could provide to them. And finally, data is very important for a telco operators to take the right decisions. There are many, many aspects in which big data and the data that we extract from our customers, and we have from our customers, will be critical. You have here some examples, chance reduction, real-time 
campaigns, video content recommendation, development of network, financial risk, talent engagement, fraud on failure prevention. So there are many things that internally can be irrelevant, very important to take internal decisions, management decisions by companies based on data. Of course, based on these principles that for us are essential to preserve data privacy and to preserve that we call data sovereignty, that means no other thing that the data uh, belongs to our customers. And let me finish with this last slide. At Telefonica, in the data economy, in the data space, we put the customer at the center. For there are other companies that think that the customer is the product. That advertising, and it's fine, but this reality that advertising should be the main business in the digital space and that the lack of security is not the problem. For Telefonica, it's on the contrary, the customer, and this is essential for us as a strategy in the digital and the data economy, the customer has to recover the control over his or her digital life. Trust should be the main objective of any policy of a telco company in the, in the data space, and privacy and security should be essential basis of any policy that can be implemented by telco operators. And with that, thank you so much for your time and your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carlos, Lopez, Blanco, and of course you do react on Twitter.